What up, YouTube? It's your boy, Big Cool, coming to you from Colossal Box and Talk, and I'm here with former WBO middleweight champion, uh, Peter Quillen. How you doing today, champ? I'm good. How you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, my first question is, last time we saw you in the ring, you were unfortunately on the you know wrong side uh, of suffering a first-round TKO to Daniel J uh, Jacobs. Having time to reflect on that fight, what in your eyes went wrong um, that night? I mean, it's, it's hard to answer that because I don't feel like, you know what I'm saying, you can always look at what you did wrong in your whole life, you know what I'm saying? Like, if I, if I, if I look back at my life and say I did this wrong and did this wrong, I probably wouldn't be who I am today, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I think, you know, all the things that happen in a, in a person's life is meant to happen. So, I think, oh, looking back, I congratulate Danny Jacobs for winning the fight. Definitely respect that. Um... Second question, you made the switch from your longtime trainer, Eric Brown, and you decided to link up with Virgil Hunter. Uh, what specifically made you choose Hunter as your next trainer, and what things has he been working on to help you improve as a fighter? You know, um, not to say no disrespect, and discredit to Virgil, but what he's done, you know what I'm saying? It's like everybody plays a a purpose in a person's life, and sometimes you over you overstay that purpose. And um, I think now just being with Virgil Hunter, just being a Christian man, and being a man of God, and also you know saying a, a, a thoughtful guy, a, a guy that's in his head with the fight, I think that could be helpful in my career. Okay, okay. Um, one can be assumed now that you're with Virgil Hunter that you have been in a camp or in a gym at least while Andre Ward has been preparing for um, his mega fight this Saturday night with Sergey Kovalev. If you have been in the gym, how has Andre Ward looked this camp? I, I worked so much in the gym with him, but I'll tell you right now, Bert, uh, Andre Ward is always in the gym. So, um, you know, when you see him, you know, you can see that he's a real man. And, um, you know, he's just a How is the environment overall, you know, because he also, you know, Virgil also trains Amir Khan and Andre, Andre Berto. How, you know, is that environment? And do you get along well with the other guys? Well, you know, I was friends with these guys before I even got in the situation, you know what I'm saying? So they're all welcome. I haven't, I haven't talked to uh, Amir Khan, but I definitely did talk to Berto upon, like, you know, making a change. You know, Ward and me, me and Ward are pretty good friends, and, you know, and I, before I initially uh, talked to Virgil, I, I, asked, I went to them first and asked them what they thought, of, their thoughts on me coming out there. And, you know, they they would see me with open arms, and then I went to Virgil, and Virgil was like, man, you know, sometimes I would have felt like you should have been out here a few years ago. You know what I'm saying? And well, whatever, every purpose plays his, his purpose, and you know, I'm glad that I'm in a in a in a gym with a guy that's like, you know, a humble guy at that, and, and you know, it's like a father figure. Okay. Um. And what is your prediction for this weekend's fight between Andre Ward and Sergey Kovalev? You know, I look at Andre Ward being a victor over uh, over a distance. You know what I mean? Because you know he's been twelve rounds so many times that you know we undermine that what he's already done in the sport of boxing. That people, you know, look at somebody that's coming in like a uh, Sergey Sergey Kovalev who only have a think eight three fights that we went the distance mm -hmm. with. Um, Twelve-round fight, and um, I just think all around, you know, I think I just like how I how, how world. He's how he, he stayed poised, and he's uh, able to be a thinker and fight. And I think that's I think that's his biggest. Uh, 
think is the big, biggest benefit in the fight. So you so you got a like war unanimous decision? Or are you gonna go out on the limb and yeah. pick him by TKO, shock and knockout? Uh, yeah, I think all around. I, I, I just you know it's hard for me to judge a fight like that. You know what I mean? Because anything can happen in the fight. For me to think I know what's gonna happen is like I might as well just stop what I'm doing and just tell guys who they should fight, who they shouldn't fight. If I know I'm just gonna do all the winning. And that's the powerful thing about boxing. You know, anything can happen, and you know. Sometimes the best things that happen is the ones that we don't expect. I agree with that. Um, you being a huge, you know, middleweight, and like you said, I read an interview where you said you've been fighting at middleweight since you were 18, and now you're 33. Do you think um, and feel that it's time to make the move up to super middleweight? Uh, yeah, I think we, we, we just trying to test the waters out. You know, when I make a comeback fight, we're going to just test the waters maybe at a catchway probably and just where we go from there. But, you know, early in my career, I was fighting. You know, I fought as high as 165. Yeah. So, for me, it's just like, I just got to see exactly where we're going to go from there. So, um, I'm, I'm assuming since it's late in the game, you're going to make your return early um, in 2017? Yeah, because, you know, all around, it was like the timing wasn't right. And a lot of stuff happened. And so, you know, we just, we just decided to, you know, start the new year off you know, making a splash and, and um, you know, making my comeback. All right. Well, it's a big weekend or it's a big week for you. Um, you're making your big screen debut and bleed for this. Um, congratulations on landing the role of Roger Mayweather, by the way. I look forward to seeing this film. Um, but tell us how was it filming this movie and what all went into preparation for the role of Roger Mayweather? Well, first of all, it's like, it's like feeling like a training camp for me and then it's, the next thing for me was just like, you know, being with guys that, you know, do this for a living and not feeling like, uh, feeling pressure, you know, to perform on the big lights, you know, with cameras around and stuff like that for something that I did for the first time. So, um, it was an experience for me to have because, you know, as a kid, you always think I'm going to be in a movie one day mm -hmm. and actually made it come true. So, for me, it's just like, you know, hard work to get you anywhere. Yeah, and I also seen you on some of um skits. I forgot the guy's name. Some funny skits you had you in. So I am guessing you got the acting bug. Yeah, Tony. Yeah, Tony. Yeah, um so is that something that you definitely want to pursue post um boxing? I know you still got a lot to offer in boxing, but um is that something you would would like to do once you um hang up the gloves or whenever that may be? Honestly, you know, to be honest with you, I'm actually going to sit down with my spiritual advisor and, and see what's the best thing that I can come up from a spiritual standpoint. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't know, I, I've done boxing for so many years of my life and being put in the spotlight and, you know what I'm saying? I just want to make sure that anything that I do, you know, for the you know, second part of my life is to be able to inspire people and, and at the same time not, you know, doing, I want to do the will of God be honest with you so it's just like I, need to, I just need to make sure whatever I do it's got to be in terms of you know what God is leading me to do I definitely respect it and, and, and you know understand um since you let me ask you a question because you're an Al Heyman guy Floyd Mayweather a few weeks ago came out with some statements saying that um his fighters as well as Heyman fighters are kind of gotten too greedy because we all know Al Heyman has you know, throughout history, since he's been in boxing, has gotten his guys well paid. And he and Mayweather basically said that guys don't want to earn it too much um, and they just want to give me, give me, give me. What are your thoughts on um, his uh, comments? And do you agree to a certain extent that um, guys just want the big paydays without, uh, uh, you know, actually earning it in the ring? I think people do want a big payday. That's what they do it for. But, you know, I don't, I don't get lost until the big paydays. No, I, mean, I think all around, you know, I, I think he's able to have his, his opinion about what he sees and what he knows. He's been in the game so long, so maybe he's seen it different than somebody like me who just came in the game and, you know, did it the way I did it. But I don't think that applies to everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't gave up so many years of my life to this, and, you know, I didn't went through all the deep, deep, deep struggles to make things happen. So I think I'm more deserving of a big payday, so. For me, it's just like, you know, everybody's able to have their opinion, and I don't criticize nobody for their opinion. All right, a few more questions. Um, Danny Jacobs, I guess, is scheduled to face Triple G um, sometime next year. What are your thoughts on that fight, and how do you see it playing out? Well, 
you know, it's a good fight. I mean, they both punchers, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, it's a fight that both of them won. And I, I think this is a true test for, um, you know, genetic Golovkin, who's been on a, on a roller coaster ride, has been one of the most fair guys in the sport. And now uh, Danny won in this fight. I think this, you know, eliminates all of the naysayers of what they say about him. Uh, Great. Um, you being from Grand Rapids, Michigan, are you a Detroit Lions fan? Peter, 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 Peter,